Hi, in this section, I will verify identities by using trigonometric identities to make it equal the other side of the equation. So what we're doing is pretty much proofs. We're gonna either make one side equal the other side by, yeah, using our identities. So there's only really two steps for verifying trigonometric identities. The first one, you gotta determine which side you wanna start. And yes, it's good to tell it your, um, wh whoever's grading your paper, um, which side you wanna start on. So if you wanna start on the left side, just say left, right, say right. And then what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna use your trigonometric, trigonometric identities to simplify, to make it look exactly like the other side of the equation. So um, I didn't have any notes because um, all the um, identities were from the previous lesson. So you could just print those out. Um, so let's start with just this, let's start with the first identity. So it says in example one, we got a ver verifying a trigonometric identity. So we have secant square theta minus one divided by secant square theta equals sine square theta. So first step is you got to pick a side. So what I will say I'm going to do is I'm going to say left side. So I'm going to pick left side. And then I'm just gonna somehow magically make it look like this. So is there anything we can do to manipulate it? So I automatically see an identity and I see um, this one, right? And if that formula is one of your Pythagorean identities. So I think it's in the previous section where I talked about, I briefly, there's a um, section where it says Pythagorean identity. So that one is going to be um, one plus tan square theta equals secant square, secant square theta, right? So I'm going to use this identity and it doesn't look exactly like this one. So we're gonna have to like move things around to make it look like that. So how would I do that? What I could do is, so we need a secant square theta minus one. So what I could do is minus this one from both sides. So this cancels and then on the left you're left with tan square theta equals secant square theta minus one. So now it looks exactly like this. So we can replace secant theta, secant square theta minus one with tangent square theta, right? So let's do that. So place that with tan square theta over secant square theta. Now let's keep on manipulating this. So um, tan square is the same thing as sine x over cosine x, but because there's a square, it's gonna be sine square x, I mean square, sine square theta over um, cosine square theta divided by secant square. Now secant, just regular secant theta is the same thing as one over cosine theta, right? So secant square would be one over cosine square theta and I like doing the bracket way to simplify. So how I do this is I look at the denominator for a numerator and a den denominator. So over here, we have a denominator of cosine square theta. And over here, we have a denominator of cosine square theta. So my common denominator would be cosine square theta. So if I multiply cosine square theta by sine square over cosine square theta, the cosine square theta disappears. So you're just left with sine square theta, right? And then on the bottom, do the same process, cosine square theta times one over cosine square theta. That just becomes one. Okay, now we just, now we started on the left side. Now it looks exactly like the right side, right? So you just proved your, you just proved this proof. So this is true and you just proved it. And this is the work you can, this is the work. Okay, so that was example one.
So number two, verify the identity. We have one over one minus sine alpha plus one plus one over one plus sine alpha equals two secant square alpha. So first step is pick a side you want to pick on. You usually don't want to pick the easy side. You usually, you usually want to pick the harder side or the longer side. So I'm going to pick the left side. So on the left side, we I'll just rewrite it again. So it's on the left side, we have one, one minus sine of alpha plus one over one plus sine of alpha. Okay, so we are adding a fraction and what do we need? What do we need when we're adding fractions? We need a common denominator. So what do you think my common denominator would be? If you usually can't find one, it's usually the combination of both. So it looks like our common denominator is one plus sine alpha times one minus sine alpha, right? So that's what we're going to do. So over here, one plus sine alpha, what do we have to multiply top and bottom? Um, top and bottom, we have to multiply that by one minus sine of alpha, right? So do that here, one minus sine of alpha. And then over here, what do we have to multiply top and bottom? One plus sine alpha. One plus sine of alpha. Okay, so let's simplify um, the numerator. So one times this is just one plus sine of alpha. And then over here, one times this whole thing is going to be one minus sine of alpha all over the common denominator, which is one plus sine of alpha times one minus sine of alpha, right? Now let's simplify the numerator. So it cancels this negative sign, the sine. So this is one plus one, that's two over one plus sine of alpha times one minus sine of alpha. Okay, so can we simplify the denominator? Yes. If Notice that this is a perfect square, so this becomes one, and then it's one square, which is one minus sine square alpha, because it's a perfect square, or you could file, foil it one by one and then you still get this. Now, it doesn't look like the right side yet. It doesn't look like two secant square theta alpha. So we're gonna have to do some more um, identities. Now, this two, we'll, we'll just leave it as two, but, but what about this? One minus sine square theta. Is there an identity you can use to make to make it to replace that with this? Yes, and that identity is under the Pythagorean identity. So I'm going to use this identity: sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha equals one. And then I'm going to so I'm going to use the this to get like that to make it look like this. So I could subtract sine square alpha from both sides, right? So this cancels, so you're left with cosine square alpha equals one minus sine square alpha, right? So that's going to be two divided by, and then you can replace one minus sine square alpha with cosine square alpha, right? Okay, so now this still doesn't look like the right, right? It almost does, but um, maybe we can break it down even further. So this two is just two, or you could think of it as two over one, right? And then do you see this? Um, cosine square alpha is the same thing as cosine alpha times cosine alpha, right? So if you do, um, so that means there's a one here and there's a one here. So you can say one times cosine alpha times one 
times one over cosine alpha. So let's um, simplify this. So this is um, two over one is just two. So you can just read that as two. Now, what's one? How can you rewrite one over cosine alpha in as in our identities? Isn't um, secant alpha the same thing as one over cosine alpha? It is. So you can just replace that with secant alpha. And then over here, you have another one over cosine alpha. So that's another secant alpha. Right? So, OK, two times secant alpha times secant alpha is two secant square alpha. And now that looks like the right side, right? So you just prove this identity. Example three, verify the identity. We have tan square x plus one times cosine square x minus one equals negative tan square, negative tan square x. So first step is pick a side. And I always, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the more complex side. So I'm gonna pick the left side. And then use our identity. So if you look at this very carefully, is there any identities you think of? Yes, I see one right here. You can translate this tan square x plus one into, um, we'll use this identity, one plus tan square alpha equals secant square alpha, right? We can use this now. So you can replace tan square x, oh, this is, should be an x, but you can use x or alpha. Tan, we can replace one plus tan square x with um, secant square alpha because of the Pythagorean identity, right? So that would be secant square x parentheses parentheses cosine square x minus one. Okay, so um, what would you do next? Can we convert uh, trying to think. Is there an identity um, secant? So, okay, I know that secant square x, well, secant x is the same thing as one over, right? Secant x is the same thing as one over cosine of x, right? So there's two of them, so it's one over cosine square x. Now, what can we do with this? What can we do with this cosine square x minus one? Is there an identity? Oh, wait. Um, I should foil it. Actually, I did. That's the one step I didn't do. So, hold on. Foil this out first. So what I mean is do secant square x times cosecant. So foil it out. So this would be secant. Secant square x times. And then secant square x times negative one is negative. Secant square x, okay? Now we can simplify this. Um, secant square x is the same thing as one over cosine square x, right? And then you're gonna times that by cosine square x over one minus c. Okay, so what happens? Um, the cosine square x cancels, the ones cancel, so you're just left with one, I'll put it right here, one minus secant square x. Now, um, can we convert this secant? Can we convert this one minus secant square x? Yes, but before I do that, um, I'm gonna factor out a one, a negative one, and you'll see why I'll do that because if when, I, when we use one of our identities, it's very close to similar to this, but it's not quite, there's like a, um, a plus. 
So it wouldn't work if it's just one minus secant squared. So I'll take out a negative. So this would be negative one plus secant square x. Okay, now, now we can convert this one plus secant square x as in our identity. And that identity is gonna be tan square x equals, well, actually we'll use, it's one plus tan square x equals secant square x, right? So um, what if I did is I subtract one from both sides. So I get tan square x equals negative one plus secant square x. So you can replace this thing with just tan square x. But remember I took out a negative so that this has a minus. Now this looks exactly like the right side. So you just prove this identity is proof. Okay, let's do example four. Verify identity, we have tan x plus cotan x equals secant x times cosecant x. So which side would I choose? I would choose the left side. Okay, so is there any way you can represent 10x? Yes, tan, tan x is the same thing as um, y over x or sine of x over cosine of x, right? Plus, is there any way you can re um, rewrite cotan of x? Yes, that's the same thing as cosine x over sine of x, right? It's also the same thing as x over y. Okay, so when you're at, now you're adding fractions. So what do you, happens when you add a fraction? You need a common denominator. So what would be our common denominator? It would be sine of x and cosine of x, right? Usually if you can't find one, it's usually the combination of both. So over here we're missing a cosine x. So multiply top and bottom by cosine of x. And then over here, we're missing a sine of x. So multiply top and bottom by sine of x. Okay, so sine of x times sine of x is sine square x plus cosine x times cosine x is cosine square of x over the common denominator, which is sine of x times cosine of x. Okay, so does it look like the right side yet? Not quite, so we have to do more tweaking. Starting with our numerator, um, this sine square x plus cosine x, cosine square x is one of our identity. It's one of our Pythagorean identity, right? And you recall that sine square x plus cosine square x equals one. So you can replace sine this whole thing by one. And then you'll have sine of, on the bottom, it's just sine of x times cosine of x. Now, does it look like the right? No, but we're almost there. Um, now, you can rewrite this as, um, remember we're dividing each term by this thing, so it's good, you can rewrite this as one over sine of x times one over cosine of x. Oops. Um, let me put it here. And then what is, how can you rewrite one over sine of x? Isn't that the same thing as cosecant of x? So that you could say cosecant of x. And then how can you rewrite one over cosine of x? That's the same thing as secant of x, right? So now it looks exactly like the right side. It's just, you can rewrite it like this. It's the same thing because of the distributive property. Okay, so it's this true. So you just proved your identity. Okay, true. That was example four. Um, let's do more example five. I think there are how many more? Um, a few more, at least a few more. So example five. So we have um, 
same ideas to verify the identity. So we have secant y plus tan of y equals cosine of y divided by one minus sine of y. So first step is pick a side. I am going to pick the right side. Okay. Now, um, okay, let's simplify. So let's simplify the secant y. That's the same thing as um, actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to pick the right side. I mean, the left side, my bad. The, yeah, I, I keep saying, I thought we were doing the left side. No, um, right side sounds right. So we'll do that. So we let me rewrite it again. So we have cosine of y divided by one minus sine of y. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna uh, multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Um, you might remember multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate by remember um, in college algebra when you took you wanted to somehow get rid of the radicals, so that's how you, that was one way to get rid of the radicals by multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So same idea. And then what's the conjugate of the denominator? It's going to be one plus sine of y, right? And then over here, this is one plus sine of y. Okay, let's simplify. So on the top, multiply each term. So that would be cosine of y plus cosine y times sine of y, that's going to be cosine y sine of y. And then on the bottom, 1 minus sine y times 1 plus sine of y, it's a perfect square. So this is going to be 1 square, which is 1 minus B square, which is going to be, which is sine y. So B square would be sine square y, right? Okay, so what can we do? Well, on the numerator, if you look at this very carefully, you have cosine y plus cosine y times sine y. You can actually factor out a cosine y, right? So this is going to be 1 plus sine of y bracket. And then on the bottom, do you see this 1 minus sine square y? We can use our Pythagorean identity, cosine square y plus sine square of y equals 1. And then we need 1 minus sine square y. So if I subtract negative sine square y both sides, you get cosine square of y equals one minus sine square of y, right? So you could replace this thing with cosine square of y. And what happens? This cosine y cancels and then this just becomes the power of one. So let me put it here. So now you have one plus sine of y over cosine of y. Now, if you simplify this, remember, if you simplify, you're dividing each term by cosine of y. So you can simplify as 1 over cosine of y plus sine of y over cosine of y, right? Does it look like the right side yet? I mean, the left, we, we picked right side. So does it look like the left side yet? No, not yet, but we're almost there. Um, one over cosine y can be written as um, same thing as secant y plus, and then sine over y over cosine y is the same thing as y over x, which is gonna be the same thing as tan y. So now it looks like the left side, right? So it's the left side secant y plus tan y. So you're done. You just proved this is true. So yeah, you just verified it. Okay, so example six verify the identity. We have cotan square theta divided by one cosecant square theta, cosecant theta equals one minus sine theta over sine theta. So 
Which side would I choose? I will choose Let's choose the left side. Now, before I go any further, this cotan square theta, we can rewrite that as um, we can change that form it using our identity. So it comes from this identity one plus. It's part of your Pythagorean identity. So if you have your Pythagorean thing, which is one plus cotan square theta equals cosecant squared theta minus one. So all you gotta do is subtract one from both sides. Oops. This is just wait. Yeah, there's no one here. So you subtract one from both sides. So this cancels, so you're left with cotan squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus one. So let's see here, cotan square theta. Um, you can now you just prove that this cotan square theta equals cosecant square theta minus one. So you can replace that with cosecant square theta minus one, and then you have one plus cosecant theta, right? So what to do next? Um, If you look at the numerator, cosecant square theta minus one, that can actually be factored, right? And that would be a perfect square. So when in factor form, it's going to be cosecant theta plus one, and then it's cosecant theta minus one, all over one plus c cosecant theta. So what cancels? Um, this, right? So now you're left with cosecant theta minus one. Now, how can you, it does it look like the right side yet? No, but you can make it keep on going. So cosecant theta is the same thing as one over sine theta minus one. So you are technically subtracting fractions. So with the, so when you're subtracting or adding, you need a common denominator. So you can rewrite this one as um, sine theta over sine of theta, right? So that simplifies as one, one minus sine of theta over sine of theta. So now it looks exactly like the right side. So you just proved it, so you are done with this problem. Okay, I think two more and then we're done. So it says verify the identity. So which side would I pick? I think you're gonna pick the more complex side, so I'm gonna pick the right side. So let's see here. This tan square theta, you can rewrite that as um, sine square x over cosine square x, right? And then we have secant, secant square x. That's the same thing as one over cosine square of x. And then it's minus tan square x. Okay, so let's simplify the new, this part, so one times sine square of x is going to be sine square of x over, and then cosine square x times cosine square x is cosine fourth x minus um, tan square, tan square x, but um, how can you rewrite tan square x as um, sine square x over cosine square x. Okay, so now we are technically subtracting fraction, right? So we need a common denominator. So over here we have a denominator of cosine to the fourth 
cosine fourth x, and then over here we have cosine square x. So our common denominator would be cosine fourth x, right? So over here we're missing a cosine square x. So go ahead and do that. So that would be, then over here we don't need to multiply anything because it's already a cosine fourth root. So this would be sine square x minus, and then sine square x times cosine square x is sine square x times cosine square x. All over cosine to the fourth x. Now, what would you do next? I'm going to put it here because I don't have enough space. So if you look at this very carefully, you can actually take out something. You can take out a sine square x, right? So that would be 1 minus cosine square x bracket over cosine to the fourth x. And then this identity, 1 minus cosine square x, it comes from sine square x plus cosine square x equals 1. So um, if you subtract cosine square x, you get sine square x equals 1 minus cosine square x. So this is going to be sine square x. And then you can replace 1 minus cosine x with sine square x bracket. And then we have cosine to the fourth x. OK, so are we done? Does it look like the? Does it look like the left? Not yet. Um, so, so what's sine square x times sine square x? That's sine to the fourth x over cosine, cosine fourth x. So you have a sine and a cosine. That's the same thing as tangent. So but there's a fourth root. So it's going to be tan of four of x equals tan of four of x. So you just proved it and yeah, you're done. Okay, finally, last one. Um, so we have sine cube x times cosine fourth x equals um, Uh, cosine fourth x minus um, minus cosine six x times sine of x, right? Uh, I think I wrote the problem wrong. I think it's it's sine. It's actually sine cube x times cosine fourth x, and then it's. is a mistake, it should be equals to sine square x and then cosine fourth x times sine of x, right? There you go. Okay, so let's simplify it. I'm going to just pick the right side. And then um, this sine square x, that's the same thing as 1 minus cosine square x parentheses. And then we have um, cosine fourth x times it by sine of x, right? Okay. So when you FOIL this cosine four x each term, you're going to get um, one times cosine fourth x is cosine four x minus, and then cosine 4x times cosine square x, that's negative cosine 6x. 
times it by sine of x. Okay. Now, um, is there anything you can take out? Uh, hold on. Um, actually, foil this out now completely. So this is going to be cosine of 4x times sine of x minus cosine 6x times sine of x, right? So now can you take anything out? I think so. Yes. You could take out cosine 4x. And then that would be, and then wait, you could take out a cosine 4x and then also a sine of x, right? So take that out. And what do you get? This would be 1 minus cosine square x. And then um, if you recall, 1 minus cosine square x is the same thing as sine square x, right? So sine square x plus cosine square of x equals 1. And if you subtract cosine square x on both sides, you get sine square x equals one minus cosine square x. So just replace this with sine square x. So you get cosine four x times sine of x. Okay, so when you Finally, finish it out. Um, you get cosine. Um, it uh, we now it looks like the left, so it's gonna look. If you simplify this, this when you foil out the sine of x, you're gonna get sine of cube of x times cosine four of x. And that looks like exactly like left, right? So that's sine of q of x times cosine of 4 of x. So that's true. And that's it. You just proved it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So we'll call it a day. Thanks. Bye-bye.